Joining us now is Shelby Steele, who wrote a phenomenal piece in the Wall Street Journal titled Why the Left is Consumed with Hatred. And uh, Shelby, it's great to talk to you. Uh, it is it is tearing uh, families apart. It is uh, at the point where the nastiness is almost exhausting for most people to deal with. Facts are irrelevant. Presumption of innocence out the window. Um, your reaction to these latest developments and uh, thoughts about where we are? Well, boy, <laughs> that's well put. We're we're in a a, a tough um, a tough spot. I think I think some of this has to do a good bit of it has to do actually um, with I wouldn't use the word collapse, but certainly the the diminishment of the left in America that it's it's lost the. It was originally conceived to fight against menaces like racism and sexism uh, and so forth and homophobia. That's what it was created to do. And yet those menaces have faded from American life. Uh, racism is not, I grew up in segregation. Racism is not remotely what it was uh, back then. It doesn't stop people's lives uh, in the way it used to. Uh, so therefore, the left today is only left with hatred itself, and so in a sense, it's it's as though they're trying to make Kavanaugh um, into racism, and so that he becomes some. You're not just fighting a, a, a mild-mannered Republican who's wants to be on the court. You're fighting uh, misogyny itself. You're fighting some larger social menace. Uh, and so the the left now I think is 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 consumed by hate because that's the that's their source of of power at this point is is hatred itself. Well, and you you see how it uh, it is the commodity they traffic uh, in whatever the issue is. You're right, whether it's uh, whether it's tax policy or whether it's uh, immigration or you know whether it's uh, this particular confirmation battle, it's never. Yeah, everybody's a fascist. Yeah, it's fat. You're fascist when the when when the definition historically of fascism is a type of intolerance and intimidation, uh, up, upending of history that the left is really engaged in, not the right. The, the left right. is all about upending history. Yes, indeed. Yeah, that's. Uh... Uh, everything, everything is sacrificed to to hatred. Hatred. Um, what what I think the left is is just driven by without realizing it. Maybe, maybe they do realize it. I don't know, but they're they're driven by this this need to have a menace that justifies their existence. And without a real menace, then they they they're lost. They don't they they don't know what to do. And so this this hatred then just be, they they have a dependency now, you know they're going into restaurants and harassing Republicans. Uh, I mean it's it's gotten to it's it's gotten more and more absurd as as time goes on. Uh, but it's the same thing they they're longing for a menace that would justify their their politics, and there really isn't one anymore. Racism, sexism, these things. It's not, you can't say they're just completely gone, but boy, are they, they are no longer what they used to be. And therefore, liberalism in America, the, the left in America, is no longer what it used to be. It's, it's no longer, you know, the, sort of the icon of the good. Uh, it's now visible to everybody as a sort of, as hatred itself, uh, as, as something base and, and mean and uh, and evil in a sense. And when you're stopping, when you, when you're doing something to stop someone as evil as a Hitlerian American political figure, he's a combination of Stalin, Hitler, and everything in between. Yeah. Then almost well, anything you, justifies you, you're taking right. him out. I mean, any type of behavior, any type of claim, any type of violence, almost. Well, anything. Yeah. I mean, it's well, it's it's even more absurd than that. It's if if you're running for dog catcher. Uh, and today the left will, if they're against you, uh, will make you into a, it's not just that you're running for dog catcher, it's that you are, you become a figure of this cultural evil, 
of um, of what bigotry of some kind usually, uh, and so you have to be fought. As we, we, as the left fought racism in the 60s, for example, very honorably, racism needed to be fought at, at that point in time. Uh, but it's not here anymore, and so that fight is, is not there to, to, uh, to dignify uh, liberalism at this point. And so it's, it's this sort of inner sense of obsolescence, of one's function having already been served that then leads to hatred and, uh, and trying to trying to make everything they certainly you see this with Trump I think especially the hatred of Trump is that it's not that you just don't like him as a president or you don't like his personality uh it is that he is a kind of new racism you he he's a systemic evil he's not just a nasty man he's a he's a so a, 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 uh Say it here, easy for me to say. A systemic evil, somebody who uh, who represents much more than just one man. And the, the left, if you're a dog cat, running for dog catcher, they're going to make you into a systemic evil. Uh, you're going on the Supreme Court, you're a systemic evil. You're not just one man. Uh, and this is where the left is today, and they're, they're very profoundly destructive as a result of that. Uh, this is a recent uh, piece of sound from one of the true intellects in U.S. political circles, Shelby, Maxine Waters. There are those who said uh, that we lack civility. When I got up and talked about uh, the president's cabinet, just tell them you're not welcome here anywhere. <laughs> It frightened a lot of people. And of course, the line president said that I had threatened all of his constituents. I did not <laughs> threaten his constituents, his supporters. Uh, I do that all the time, but I didn't do it that time. <laughs> She's the toast of the town. Yes, she is. She's sort of the, the icon of, of new left-wing hatred. Hatred as a political a tool, a political almost ideology. Um, tell them that they're not welcome here. Uh, hatred is, in this sense, it's almost egotistical. It's it's we're so good uh, that you are contemptible, and you have to be treated that way as, as a contemptuous uh, figure. Uh, well, you boy, when you look at Maxine Waters, you see it rather nakedly. Uh, this is a political point of view that's that uh, is is going to, dying very a very hard death. Um, there's nothing positive, not a single idea that would be uplifting that would encourage uh, us as Americans to move forward in a positive way. Nothing, um, and it, it's it's really striking. You really see we're at a crossroads where. We've we've taken liberalism for so so long for granted as really in many ways a source for the good, uh, and now the underbelly of it is visible everywhere, and, and people like Maxine Waters, especially. What do you think? Uh, where do you think this ends up? That's a very very good question, um, because I'm I'm not aware of any historical precedent. I don't know where. This, I'm sure there must be, but but I'm not aware of it. Uh, I think liberalism dies, uh, but I think it's going to die a very ugly uh, death, and it's going to hurt people in the process. Uh, but I have faith that ultimately the American people will see this as for what it is, and um, it will lose its good name. It will lose its association with with fighting racism and sexism and so forth, it will it will become visible for the sort of ideology of hate that it has become. I, I at least that's my hope, uh, that's my faith uh, that, that we'll somehow get past it. What's amazing is that a lot of and I've noticed the a lot of the protesters I've seen gathering in Washington. We're talking to Shelby Steele here on the Laura Ingram Show. Uh, a lot of them seem to be people in search of a of an identity themselves, a, a, 
uh, in search of a connection with someone else. We're we're in this together, fighting against the evil forces of Trump and everything that he touches. And that's wild because conservatives don't tend to protest much because right. we're too busy, like with work and our family, and we're trying to like, keep it all together. And the left is seems untethered to a a clear grounding set of foundational principles. And so they, they're, they're seeking meaning through protest. And I don't know where that ultimately ends up or where it goes. Yeah. Well, it's, it's almost a kind of vanity, uh, a self importance. Um, I need to be identified with some larger historical movement like the war, the fight against racism or, now I think probably climate change is a good example. That you know I'm uh, I'm a part of this of something higher than the mundane sorts of things that conservatives are interested in, like you know uh, working hard and and uh, raising children and who are going to be responsible and and so forth. Those are sort of mundane um, uh, obsessions. Where the left is, no, I'm I'm. I'm going to change the world. I'm godlike. Uh, I'm, you know, m- my uh, my innocence is 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 the truth. Um, and you know, there's nowhere with, with that point of view, uh, a fall is inevitable. There's there's nowhere to you can't sustain that in in real life. The the reason I grew up and became a conservative. The reason I think many people uh, have is because it deals with reality. Uh, I can actually, you know, go to work and, and have a career and, and uh, raise a family and do, do normal things in life in a, in a meaningful way that brings meaning to my life um, without the grand uh, notions of, of innocence that, uh, that the left sort of identifies with constantly. It's it's really a sort of self congratulation, um, uh, a vanity. Yeah. Well, and I think it's a yeah. It's an it's narcissism. It's it's all of those things. But it is mm-hmm. it is something that the Republicans have to understand. I mean, this, they're not playing like badminton here. Okay, this is no, smash no, mouth, no, smash head. Yeah, this is they they want to kill you. Okay, it's not it's, like badminton. Is, I I know what it's like because I remember what racism was like. I was ready to kill. Mm. I was ready to kill. That's where they have gotten themselves, even though racism is not here anymore in the way it once was. Shelby Steele, it is so great to talk to you. Phenomenal piece. It's on our uh, Facebook page and on LauraIngram.com. Why the left is consumed with hate. Shelby Steele, stay with us. The Laura Ingram Show. Thanks for listening to this podcast excerpt of The Laura Ingram Show. If you'd like to receive podcasts of our complete shows, go to lauraingram.com and sign up to become a member of Laura 365. Our Laura 365 members get commercial-free streams and podcasts of our shows every day we're on the air. And also, you can listen to the last 30 days of The Laura Ingram Show. Be ahead of the curve. Join Laura 365.